Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Uh, I pray that all is well and the peace of God, that peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, is with all of us. We because we really need it. We really do. And um, we are in a holy season, uh, an appointed time. And uh, I hope that you are planning uh, to pray more and to fast. Pray and fast. Uh, on the 15th, <clears throat> from the 15th to the 23rd of uh, April, we are in the Passover season. And I really hope that you're planning to do something about it. And uh, so that's a friendly reminder. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about money. Money, we all know what is money. We all use money. Uh, money, we have many currencies, uh, like uh, the US dollars, the Canadian dollars, the, the Euro and the Yuan. Every country in the world has a name for the currency that they use. But I would like to talk about money, not the currency. Uh, the power that money is, the spirit that money is. Um, it started with uh, a teaching from the Holy Spirit. Um, I was watching a documentary on YouTube and they were talking about old money and the naming names that we all know. You see the name, you know who they are. Uh, how much money the great grandpa had and, and so forth and uh, and the Holy Spirit told me please don't laugh I'm very serious <clears throat> he told me that we have people here on earth right now that they don't die they don't die because they are uh, Nephilims meaning they are a byproduct of the sons of God and the uh, uh, human women who were married to men so we go back to Genesis 6 that's where we see it in the Bible but the thing is that program of spiritual being coming coupling themselves coupling uh, meaning of physical intercourse with human has never stopped it has never stopped and uh, actually it's very much uh, they keep they are still doing it so we have people here on earth that are well known well established but they talk about a bloodline a bloodline like a, a, they inherited money from their father the grandfather the great-grandfather but actually some of them are still that great grandfather. So they, what they do is they transfer your their spirit into a physical envelope because that's what we are. This is me, but I'm housing a spirit and I'm housing a soul, and all three are me. So they have access. Don't ask me how. Uh, I, I cannot elaborate more than that they have access to envelopes that looks like them for some and the others don't look like them but it's the same spirit so it's a spirit that is old that can tell you about you know they came from europe they came from europe and uh, they can tell you about the presidency of uh, President Garfield or President uh, Lincoln because they were alive, they were in business, they were businessmen and they were making money and earning money. And that's what they do. So they are here with us. And there is, it's a very well oiled machine because you have lawyers, you have doctors and uh, accountants who know exactly what's going on and they are a team you know like one hand helping another they work together and what they do is that they um, when they see that this envelope is about to die because we are here on planet in this realm of ours death 
is a natural outcome for all of us, they will change your bank account, all your investment, all your everything that you are, your estate. They will take it and move it under another name, another ID. It could, they can say it's your son or your family or a trust fund. But when this envelope dies, they bury it. But the spirit is still alive in another envelope and that spirit thrives with that money. So it's so deep. We started with these serious businessmen that are so rich that they could feed a whole nation. And then we went to the music industry. That's an industry that is very lucrative. The way we have people, I'm choosing my words very carefully. We have people who were well known. We all clapped and yelled and screamed to the point that we go back home with a raspy voice. They were preparing and earning money for a group. And that group takes that money and use it for their glory. So you are using a gift, a talent, like a beautiful voice and the stage presence and whatever, everything that you need to have a, a thriving musical career. And most of them studied in church, by the way, and the gift was given by the Mosai creator. Yet you choose, you sign a deal, uh, a contract, you sell your soul to that establishment because it's a, it's a machine. You sign your soul away, you give it to them. So while you are living, you live very well, very well. You're provided for, but when you die, they take the money. They take the money and uh, the money is theirs. They don't do that with everybody, but they do that with the great ones. And uh, just observe great American musicians. And that deal is done only here in America um, with great artists, you know, and that's what they do. So most likely that the children that we see, we are told that they are the children of such and such, such and such, but they are not. They are not. They, they are um, IVF babies, designer babies, but they are not the offspring, the biological offspring of that entrepreneur, for some of them. And they are, um, they are children of someone who passed away or what I saw of even Satan himself. And um, that's how those babies were born and created and conceived and born. You pay the mother, of course, you provide for her and they are here because you need a physical envelope to be here on this realm of ours. So we have people, when we see them in entertainment tonight of those uh, social pages, the son of such and such. Hollywood royalty, uh, yeah, that's what they are. They are spirit who are not human beings. No, um, by, by that I mean, their spirit is not a human spirit. It's a spirit spirit that is housed in a physical body so that they can operate uh, you can see them in the, uh, on TV, at the Grammys, at the Oscars, or what have you, and uh, that's what they do. So that's why you have people who die, and they will leave a huge amount of money, but that money doesn't go to the children, because those children, first of all, they are princes on the dark side, right? And uh, that's one, and then two, the money goes to fund other operations. So money, is needed here in this realm and what they do is that money is so powerful that a father can sell his own 
a child to be paid. And uh, money is so powerful that a brother and a sister can stop talking to each other because of money. Uh, money is so powerful that a person can say, some of us, not all of us, those who don't have the fruit of the Spirit in the belly. Uh, that's my assessment because when you have the Holy Spirit, it will temper you, it will balance you, even you out. There are things that you cannot do anymore. When you have him for real, of course, we have those that are in church and say, Alleluia, praise the Lord, Alleluia, praise the Lord, but they are lying. Uh, they are not there yet, but they, because they don't know what is there and not there, they think, they assume that they are saved, but they are not. And those uh, can prostitute themselves for money to go buy a beautiful watch, a beautiful purse, or whatever it is that they want to shop. So that's what money does to people. Money, in conclusion, I saw uh, parents who were selling, they broke a deal in the spiritual realm with spirit, and they sell their children. So that's very the de most dangerous one because you tell that spirit, it could be the spirit of uh, ambivalence, or, uh, lust that pushes you to, to, to have sex with everything that breathes, uh, human or not. And uh, that, you tell that spirit, you say, you can take among my seed. It's a very vague contract where you don't um, specify the terms and that spirit that's how they come in the family in the bloodline and they have a chair and they are sitting and they are choosing who they can use to possess it could be a spirit of incest it could be a spirit of um, homosexuality it could be a spirit of madness mental disease that you are unstable they need to tie you up with a uh, you know um, what do you call that thing uh, that they tie up people uh, Camisole de force, we call it in French. So that's what money does. And when you have that kind of contract, that spirit has the legal right to come in the family and to sit. And the, the only way to kick them out is through the blood, through the finished work, through what our Lord and Redeemer did. So that's what I discovered about money. Money is very powerful. Money is a force that you need to master. I used to work in a very high-end uh, jewelry store in Beverly Hills. I would not say the name. And um, my manager was a Persian man. And my one of my co-workers, I was selling diamonds and watches. I mean, I'm talking about time pieces, those like $200,000 and above. You need to wear gloves to handle the watch, right? That's, I was a gemologist. And uh, they used to tell me, why are you so detached about money? You need to worship money so that money will come to you. You need to love money so that money will love you back. And I was, I used to tell, and I was not a praying person, not I am as I am right now. And uh, one day I was having lunch with my manager. He told me, he said, you know, in Persia, we worship this God, Mammon. It's a God of money. And when you worship him, when you talk to him and you promise him things, like a pledge, then he will provide for you. And I was just at the beginning of my uh, Christian work, and I was looking at the man like with my jaw. Like, so what Jesus said when he said, you cannot serve two masters, you will love one and hate the other, you will please one and displease the other, I'm paraphrasing, it's true. It only yeah, throughout Middle East, we have that uh, temples for the God of money. And then my Kore Korean co-workers told me, he said, yeah, in the, it was a Shinto. He said, yeah, we too, we do that. We talk to money, you call money, you call it. And my understanding was that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. So I need to secure my relationship with the most high the creator of heaven and earth and is going to provide for me because when i read in my bible promises 
when he says the young lion lack and suffer hunger but they that seek the Lord do not lack any good thing when he says delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you her desires when I mean we have so many promises given unto us so we need to be careful people of God we need to be careful we need money to pay rent mortgage car notes insurance all the bills we need money but at what cost how are you getting your money what are you willing to do for your money can you traffic a baby can you sell a child for money what is your tipping point where can you say this is where i draw the line that's what i wanted to tell you about money the power of money it's a real power and from some of us things that i see on uh, WhatsApp, that uh, things, that, uh, movies that are sent to me, you know, uh, people do despicable things for money. They eat even human feces for money. You know, in those esoteric groups where they tell you you need to eat money, uh, you need to eat this so that we will give you money, you will never lack, you will never, you know, be uh, out of money. What are you willing to do for money? And the best way to, to me, the Bible is my uh, how-to guide of life. I do everything. You know, the more I read the Bible, the more I grow, the more I want to go back to the Bible because that's our stability, that's our security. So I am a tither. I want to use money in the kingdom ways, not in the world ways. Uh, that's why those a certain quality of human beings here in hollywood they don't sleep much they are bipolar they end up abusing substances to forget what they saw or what they did or for the love of money so in closing the love of money is the root of all evil and yet we need money to live. So you need to have a right balance, a right attitude and live in the fear of the Lord. I know it's something that is uh, out of, uh, people don't talk about it anymore. We need to talk about sin. We need to talk about the fear of the Lord because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. So that's what I wanted to tell you about money and what I'm discovering. We have people that are old, they are 200, 300, some are 500 years old, they just go. And then pay attention to these. You have a kind of celebrity when they die, just before their death, they sell everything. They will announce in the papers that they sold to an unknown buyer. It's them, that same person, uh, but he doesn't want his name to be known. So they call him unknown, but it's him. And they see, still reside in the same house uh, with the same uh, structure, lawyer, accountant, and everything, but it's still the same person, but with a different uh, physique, a different face. I will recommend to you a movie with Ryan Reynolds, Selfless. It will confirm, when I saw the movie, I was like, oh my gosh, I've been seeing this in my dreams. You know, in my vision, those people don't die. They just move from one place to another. It's real. We have them here. And they have one thing in common. They love the limelight. They love to be praised. They love to be seen and to talk and to teach. But they are the same soul. They are the same. They have a weird charisma. That's what we see here. Like, wow, they are so charismatic. They are so good, they are good speakers, they are well-mannered. Are... There is a whole structure behind it that is very devilish. That's what I wanted to share with you. God bless you. Please give uh, a thumb up and subscribe. Thank you very much.